I'm working the New Perspectives Access 2010 textbook. We're in Tutorial 10 and we're going to write a little bit of Visual Basic for applications. So let's pick up on page 577. We're going to edit an existing procedure. The procedure that we've been asked to edit is within the Customer Contracts form, so let's open that form and take a look at the display. Next to the city Holland we see the text Cynthia in blue. Next to Grand Rapids we see the text Christopher in red. And it looks like we have only those two names showing. Let's switch over to Design View and take another look at that. On my form I have a text box. The text box is named TXT Team. It's a good idea whenever you place an object on your former report to give it a meaningful name. In this particular case, Cynthia and Christopher are team leaders, so it would make sense to name the text box team. It's a meaningful name to the users of this database. Now, this particular code is tied to the on current event. So when the form loads and when we move from one record to the next, this particular event is triggered. Let's take a look to see what is actually written. We'll click the Build button. It takes us into the module. This is a private subroutine. It's, that means it is only accessible from this particular form. It is tied to the on current. We're setting the properties of this text txt team text box to true and we're tying it to a case structure so if it's tied to the city field if the text Grand Rapids appears in the city field then we're going to display Christopher in the txt team text box and the font color is going to be red if the text in the city field is Holland, we're going to display Cynthia, and the font color will be blue. In every other case, we're going to set the visible property of the text box to false, so we won't see it. What we've been asked to do is change Christopher's red font to a black font. So I'm just going to go over to page 580 in the textbook, look at figure 11-6, I see the RGB values, RGB, that'd be red, green, blue. And so it's a combination of those three colors produce other colors. Black, according to this, is zero in the red value, zero in the green value, and zero in the blue value. So we'll save this, close it. Take a look at our form again and see if it is working. Here we see Christopher is black. What if we'd like another color? I can go in and I can experiment. I'm just going to do 200, 100, or 110 work and just take a look to see what kind of color this gives me. Now oh, kind of a brown gold color. So you can see that you can experiment with your RGB values and make up colors of your own. I'll set it back to zero. Zero, zero is that, that is what we were asked to do. And I'm going to double check it before I close the form. Looks like it's working. So I'll save and close. The next thing that we've been asked to do is to create a standard module. This standard module is going to be available within our database to all other objects that we create. So I'm going to go to create. In the macros and code group I'm going to click on module. It's going to open up a new module for me. I see module 1 here. When I name it that name will change. And over on the top of page 583 asking you to key in the, the code that you see there. Another way is I can select the insert procedure click Procedure. This is going to be a function. It is public. Now since it is, we are putting it in the, in the module group. If you refer back to page AC 576, it talks about that 
A procedure that more than one object can use is called a public procedure. And we're going to place it in a standard module and make it public. So since you're placing this in a standard module, you do not need to write the word public on it. This particular add procedure will add that, that term. So I'm going to put the name of my function in here, cap all. And see so public function, cap all, and it's going to produce a return, an F value, a field value. The first thing I want to do then is comment my code. It is always a good idea to comment your code. You might forget what you're trying to do, and when you pass the database off to someone else, if they need to, if that person needs to, they can refer to your comments to see what it is you're trying to do. On page 584, step 2, the code that we're going to type is capitalize all letters of a field value. Then we'll key in our code. The indenting is not essential for the code, but what the indenting does is it makes the code easier to read. My cap all is going to be set equal to the built-in ucase function, uppercase. You see when I key in the opening parent, it's going to tell me to put in my string and it's going to be f value or field value. And we'll save it. And I'm going to save it as page 585, step 1 at the bottom of the page. BAS, it is a VBA, Visual Basic for Applications module, BAS, Holland, Procedures. We're putting the S on the end of it because as a public module we could add additional procedures to this module. You see now that module 1 has changed to the name of my um, procedure, BAS Holland Procedures. Let's test it. If the immediate window is not open, there are instructions on page 586 for opening it. You can go to View and open the immediate window. I'm going to start by putting in the question mark, cap all, put the value between the parentheses, and in this case the value will be whatever state I choose. I'll put in Washington and hit enter. And it took my lowercase wa and returned it as uppercase wa. So it appears my function is working. I will go ahead and save it and close that module. And now it's appearing on my navigation pane within the modules group.